very much. Which is yours. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to have to follow up from that massive implications for humanity and potentially our species and talk about essentially an augmented uh, uh, accounting service. So apologies for that, everyone. Um, yeah, my name's Liao, and I'm from Granta. I'm head of strategic partnerships and one of the founders. And welcome. Yeah, so just show of hands. Does everyone know what R&D tax credits is? Yeah, basically, great. So I'm just going to give a brief, brief intro, intro to it. But really what I want to talk about today is how does R&D tax credits and what, what can you actually infer from R&D tax credits and R&D spend in order to gain insights into industry and understand uh, ecosystem as a whole uh, applied to, to space technology. So just as a brief, brief background, R&D tax credits, essentially the government gives um, tax credits to companies that do research and development in the UK in order to improve um, uh, UK industry and generally it's between 14.5 to 33% back. And it's a cash injection or a tax rebate of the corporation tax. Our work, as you can see, yeah, we've been in the game for quite a while. We all came from big uh, consultancies and we span out ourselves. And yeah, let's talk about R&D tax credits. It seems like something that is uh, quite unimportant or overlooked or uh, just a boring, untechnical financial thing. But it actually gives you a lot of information, especially if you're an investor, especially if you're looking to evaluate companies. And it can actually help you understand industries really well. As you guys know, and girls know, um, investment into aerospace and space generally is increasing, um, as we've heard multiple times now, and we can see all the different technologies that are being developed in this area. So we've got all sorts, all sorts. Integration of machine vision, robotics, end effectors, uh, improving the carbon footprint or sustainability of uh, the vehicles themselves. The question is, what can R&D tax credits provide insights to? So R&D tax credits, essentially, you, it's, it's right in between science and engineering and finance. Because in order to claim, you need to understand from a scientific perspective what a company is doing and what the finances associated with that are. So if you understand that, then you can start to see, OK, there are consistent areas within space, within aerospace, um, that companies are having problems with. You can see what kind of funding that they're applying to those areas, and you can understand how to tackle them. So from our side, what we do is we provide a really effective way of, of actually claiming on the tax credit service. We have a platform, proprietary platform. We have um, all our consultants are ex-engineers, so we need to understand what kind of uh, work, technical work that our clients are doing. And by understanding the flow of money, essentially, in the area, you can understand, OK, where are the significant challenges? Where are the significant challenges from a technical perspective? Where are the significant challenges from a logistical perspective and from a supply chain perspective? And what we're trying to do, essentially, is create an ecosystem between the aerospace and space industry, the supply chain, and strategic finance. So if we were to say, if you were an investor and you were looking at a company, we could essentially help you and say, OK, this company, given the kind of technical work they're doing, given the kind of spend that they have, we can predict what kind of tax credits they're going to get back. That can help you uh, when looking to actually evaluate the company, can help you understand um, what kind of uh, essentially finances can be projected uh, from now in the future, especially in accordance with what kind of products are being made. Now. By understanding this, this is not actually not specific to aero and space, obviously. An interesting thing was, was we're hearing Ray speak previously, we're talking about agriculture, agriculture on, on, um, on space vehicles. By understanding the insights to these different areas, for example, connecting agriculture with space, you can understand, OK, how does hydroponics apply to space? What kind of technical challenges are there? What kind of finances are being applied in that area? So this very small, boring uh, accounting type service can actually give you real insight in terms of 
where the money is flowing and what kind of science is happening and you can start connecting the dots between different sectors. And basically, that's what we want to do. So that's how we use our service to, to both help our clients to, to gain their tax credit service, but also in order to connect the dots between different industries and areas in order to help uh, investors gain insight into how spend is happening in different industries and where uh, it can go and where it needs to go. So yeah, I kept it short and sweet. And if anyone has any questions, please, please uh, let me know. Please go ahead. Um, so the universities uh, get a lot of their funding through funding bodies, mm -hmm. um, but uh, through the R&D tax credit uh, system, there's a chance that if, um, when companies work with the university, they claim I think it's 20% mm -hmm. um, rather than the 100%, uh, which they do their own uh, when they do their own um, uh, R&D internal. Um, a question to yourself, more kind of a philo philosophical sort of question. Um, SMEs, in my opinion, I could be incorrect here, um, they are flexible, but they're very focused on their roadmap. Okay? Um, how would opening up the R&D tax credit, in your opinion, to allow more of that percentage, so instead of 20% um, being, uh, being refunded to subcontractors, but more like 80% or 100%, mm -hmm. how do you think that might change the overall dynamic of funding between companies and universities and research organisations? So are you talking about legislation changes? Yeah, so let's say if we lobbied for legislation yeah. change in the R&D tax credit, mm -hmm. from your perspective as your business you know, doing this uh, and having the insights that you have, because this is your main business, mm -hmm. um, what do you think sort of impacts do you think that would have on the overall kind of funding uh, and dynamics between universities and businesses? I mean, from, from, from my business, I'll say put it to 150%, let's go. But obviously, um, the government, uh, they have, let's put it this way, this area is... R&D tax credit specifically, it, it, it's quite messy and you need the right people to understand specifically the right thing. So I don't think from an actual societal perspective to improve R&D tax credits to 100% may necessarily actually increase the R&D happening in the UK. I mean, from, from a pure business perspective, it would be great for us. But I think that this should be capped, which it is now at 33% uh, for SMEs, um, generally we claim 25%. Because it really depends what the R&D is. If it's, if it's R&D putting marble planes on, uh, marble floors on a private jet, it's probably not necessarily going to leak back into uh, a benefit for UK society. So it really depends on specifically what, what, the, what kind of industry, what kind of area it is. So I would propose changing uh, legislation for specifically different areas and different industries. So for example, agriculture, I would say it would be great to increase that because there's a lot of changes that need finance in that area. But somewhere else where there may be a, a, a lot more inflated, a lot more competition and probably not that much direct benefit to UK society, I would say keep it as it is. But thanks for that question. Um, any other questions? We have a virtual question from Alexander. Uh, how can this be implemented in poor countries, especially about the agriculture? So how can a tax credit be implemented? So a tax credit is from the government itself. So um, the, it's, it's the government of those countries that, that put a fund aside and that needs to be, that, that, from that fund that you claim back. So it really depends on how the government wants to set up their, their funding and how they think best to allocate money in order to improve their R&D. It's very different for different areas. It depends how much money they have. It depends on their infrastructure. It depends on their crops. It depends on what kind of import exports they have. So it's a, it's a very difficult question to unpack. But different countries have different schemes in place. The UK is actually one of the most lucrative. It's one of the um, most forgiving um, and um, you can't, you, it's difficult to, 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 to replicate that in, in different countries because there's different variables in place. I've got a question. Please. Um, have you got um, any real data on how the policy mm -hmm. has increased research and development activities in the UK since its very beginning? Have you got any information on that? Has it actually helped so, society being more innovative? Sure. Yeah, yeah, there are, there are some um, uh, 
most of the, 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 the data that you have is actually towards grants rather than tax credits. Tax credits still is quite overlooked as an area. So um, there are companies that have data regarding that, but for UK specific, there isn't that much data to understand for specific industries. So generally, the data you look at it will say, okay, it's improved R&D, but it's not broken down by industry, it's not broken down by area, so it doesn't actually give you uh, interesting insight to, to actually understand um, how this big uh, legislation can affect different areas specifically. So I would love to see more actual specific industry data analysis, for example, space. How is R&D spent uh, improving space technology in the UK? It's not there. It's very generic, and this is a big challenge of the industry. Thank you. Thank you. So we got um, any other questions? Not at the minute. So with that, uh, with that in mind, um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank for you very much. Us a round of applause. Thank you.